Hi guys, what is up? Welcome to my channel. So for today's video, I am finally going to be doing my review and full wear test of the new Pat McGrath Sublime Perfection The System. So it's our complexion system, primer, foundation, and setting powder. So if you want to see how those work for me today, then just keep watching. First of all, let me just talk about the shipping of this product. So I ordered this on the 26th and I did not get it until August 7th. So it took a really long time. Usually Pat McGrath ships to me pretty fast. So I was a little bit sad and their online system was completely wrong, like the tracking system. It says that my package was just shipped last night even though I had it in my hands. And then it also, before that point, didn't say anything. Like it hadn't shipped or anything. So the tracking was completely off. Shipping took forever but I think they had just an overwhelming amount of orders and that's the reason for that it sucks but it is what it is first world problems I already have a video of the foundation because Sephora released the foundation so I bought it I tried it out uh, you can check out my first impressions and wear tests on just the foundation I'm excited to come back to kind of give you my updated thoughts on that foundation and see maybe if the system is better and the other two products kind of aid in what the foundation lacks that's what I'm hoping so this is the skin fetish sublime perfection the system. You can get all three of these items on the Pat McGrath website. You can also purchase each of the items individually on the Sephora website if that is something that would be better for you. I did not purchase the everything kit which had the brushes. I'm sorry. It was an extra hundred dollars for two brushes and I don't need no more brushes in my life. So I just picked up the system which is a hundred and fifty dollars. And just so you know it is currently out of stock. The system comes in five different colors which is light, light, medium, 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 deep, and deep. And basically, it's just matched up with the colored powder. I mean, all of the primers are the same. Uh, in each category, you have the actual shades, which there are quite a lot. I believe 36. And then it'll match up the automatic powder for you, which I believe there are only five color powders, which I will get into later on in the video. Let's start out with the primer. I have not tried it out, have not even opened it. This is the Skin Fetish Sublime Perfection Primer. In here, you you get one whole fluid ounce and it comes in beautiful packaging kind of cheap though honestly just a matte black paper is around this plastic bottle huh this seems kind of cheap for Pat McGrath this is $60 individually so this better do magic on my face because $60 is a lot for a primer. It says makeup meets skincare. It's supposed to be smoothing, skin refining uh, that soothes, hydrates, and renews with a sublime silken effect while preparing the skin for foundation. So this is what it looks like on my hand. You just push it down. Feels kind of lotiony, a little bit thick. So what I'm gonna do is I'm going to just put it on half of my face so that I can compare today to see if one side wore better than the other. Let me do my bad side. So, maybe like a slight fragrance, but nothing overwhelming by any means. It feels quite nice on my skin. Has a little bit of a cooling sensation to it. I mean, for real, for real, looking up close, I don't really notice too much a difference between one side and the other. I will say there is a slight smoothing effect maybe over my pores, but nothing really impressive. If anything, it just feels nice uh, and prepped my skin, but as it's sinking in, I feel like I don't even feel it anymore. So we'll see about the wear time and how it melts in with the foundation. But so far, I feel like it's just something that I put on my skin that soothed it a little bit. I don't know. This is the Skin Fetish Foundation. I have mine in the shade Light Medium 9. This is a really good shade for me. Let me just go on a little spiel about this foundation. I have been testing it out for the past week that I've been waiting for this package to arrive. And for the most part, what I said about it in my first impression still rings pretty true. The only thing is I feel like I didn't verbalize this well enough to you guys, but I do 
really like this foundation. It's not extremely long wearing. It's not for those who want full coverage. It's just a pretty looking natural foundation. But this foundation, it's not going to be a good universally loved foundation like Estee Lauder Double Wear, Giorgio Armani Luminous Silk. It's just not one of those foundations. It really has to to be what you're looking for for you to like it. So that's just kind of my two cents on that. I do really like it. I find a need for just a nice looking natural foundation that feels really light on the skin, so I'm not mad at it. I have seen some reviews on this foundation on top of mine, and I would say that it looks like it may apply better with better coverage if you use a brush. I personally, I just like a sponge. I'm gonna stick true to myself and what I I like. I just like applying foundation with a sponge. Now this is a buildable foundation. What I personally like about this foundation is you really can get a sheer coverage with it. On days that I do actually want a little bit more coverage, this does build up to a medium coverage. Not a full medium coverage, like a, just a medium coverage. <laughs> For the video's sake today, I'm not going to apply concealer. I really just want to see how the foundation does on its own. So I'm just gonna bring that under my eyes as well. By the way, I forgot to mention that individually this foundation retails for $68 which is so expensive. I will admit I do have other luxury foundations around this price point that I do think are a little bit better, but just for me, I feel like there's a time and a place for a foundation like this that I really like. And this does have 1.18 fluid ounces in it, so it is 0.18 more fluid ounces than the average foundation. So this is what it's looking like on my skin. As you can see, really natural, pretty finish. I love the finish on my skin, I'm not gonna lie to you. And I really don't notice it, I'm sizing any dry patches or anything. I did get a couple questions about mature skin and how I feel it would work on mature skin. So the pro of it is that it's so lightweight you don't need a lot of product unless you're looking for a lot of coverage but it's so light and thin on the skin that that's going to work to your advantage. However, I do notice that it does go into my lines pretty quickly, so I do have to set it. And on mature skin, I don't really like to set skin, so it's kind of a give and take. I think that mature skin, you can definitely make it work for you, for sure, especially if you just kind of blend out the lines a little bit throughout the day. But there will be a little bit of sinkage into fine lines, so just be aware of that. So quickly, let me take a look to see if there's a difference between the two sides. I mean, I will say this side does look a little bit more perfected like ever so slightly like I had to look for a minute straight very close to that mirror so not enough of a difference for $60 let me just say that if any maybe the side of my face is just smoother I don't know so, this product I want to talk about this is the skin fetish sublime perfection setting powder it retails for $55 it comes in five shades it sets makeup for long-lasting wear delivering a barely there feel with soft focus effects that visibly blur fine lines and imperfections. So I'm really hoping that this does what the foundation cannot do alone. So I'm hoping this really helps the wear time. It helps the not blending into fine lines and potentially gives a little bit more coverage. For my set, I got light medium too and there is something that I do want to show you. My mom ordered the whole set as well and she's a medium skin tone and just with her kit, hers automatically came with medium three. And I have to say there is a big jump in the powder colors. So let me show you the color that my set comes in. So this is the light medium too. This is going to be a good color for me. And let me show you light medium three. So this is just one step up. Do you guys see how orange? this color is. It's crazy. And I just can't believe that this is the next color up. It's just, it's crazy. So anyways, my mom has a medium skin tone. This is what comes with the medium set, and this powder works better for her. So just maybe something to keep in mind. Maybe you might want to buy powder individually. There's just something that I wanted to note so that you are aware. Okay, so I'm just going to use my sponge to pat the powder underneath my eyes to set. That's just normally what I always do, so. 
this pattern has almost a little bit of yellowiness to it, but not a crazy amount because honestly, if you're a light skin tone, you really shouldn't be using like banana powder, but this has that ever so slight yellow undertone, which I think is going to be very flattering. I don't notice this adding any extra coverage. It's just a setting powder. And get right here. I'm really just gonna hit the T-zone because I don't set in any other areas. So I have to admit, I feel like this powder is looking very pretty on my skin. Setting it on my under eyes kind of really smoothed everything out. You can tell I do have powder on my skin. It's not one of those powders that is just completely invisible on the skin, but it definitely did some smoothing on my forehead that I am very, very impressed with. I mean, thus far from what I can tell, I actually am really enjoying this powder. What I am going to do next is I'm just going to finish the rest of my face makeup and I will be back to give you kind of my final thoughts before the day starts. Okay, so this is the finished makeup look for today. I just wanted to give you guys a moment to take a look at how my skin is looking with everything over top. I mean, overall, I'm not gonna lie to you guys. Like, I really like the finish on my skin. I love how it's looking. I like the coverage. I like that it's so light. And I really do feel like my skin looks smooth. It looks soft. And the best part, I think, about this system is that it feels so lightweight. I do not feel any makeup on my skin. So it's just such a nice consistency. You can't even feel it. There was a couple of things that I did forget to mention earlier on. So just so you know, these products are made in Italy. And I forgot to complain about the powder. So first of all, the packaging is super cheap. There's like a netted sifter, which I really like, but there's nothing to kind of cover it, you know, that plastic thing. It's just open, which is a huge mess. So for $55, come on. Also, there is only 0.17 ounces of powder in here. So just for comparison, the Hourglass Setting Veil has 0.36 ounces. The Milk Makeup has 0.87 ounces. For $55, that little amount of product is ridiculous. It is 10 o'clock. I'm going to be getting my day started now. I'm going to go out to lunch. I'm going to do a lot of cleaning today. That's what I have in the books today, so I will take you along with me for my updates. Hi guys, so we are currently at the three-hour checkpoint. I wanted to film in front of some natural sunlight so you can kind of see how it's looking in this lighting. So I just got back from eating sushi, so my lips are kind of messed up, but I did want to give you guys a three hour update. So I'm gonna zoom you in. So, so far, I mean, my skin is looking really great. It has more of a natural finish now, Whereas before, when I put the powder on, the powder did mattify the foundation a little bit. Nothing too, like, obnoxious, like, really matte or anything. Like, it was still natural looking. But now I have a little bit more of my natural glow coming through. So I think it looks a lot better. I will say, believe it or not, that the side that I applied the primer is looking like a touch. And when I say a touch, I mean a touch more moisturized than my non-primer side. But, like... Again, I'm really looking for it. It really is not that big of a difference. And as far as smile lines go, I did kind of notice them coming through about 45 minutes into wear time. It's not really that bad though. Nothing obnoxious, but just something to be noted. All right, so that is my three hour check-in. I will check in with you in a few more hours. Hey guys, so I am back for my six hour checkpoint. So I've had all of my makeup on for six hours now. So at this point, now I have normal to dry skin, but at this point, I am noticing my oils starting to come through, but it's not bad at all. Like it looks really nice still. I do think in certain lighting though, you definitely can see that I'm going to start getting a little greasy within the next few hours because after I put my makeup on in the certain lighting I looked matte and in that same lighting right now I do look a little bit more shiny but it just looks really healthy more than anything not like oily greasy or anything like that the primer side is looking a little bit better I'm not gonna lie than the non primer side and I mean ever so slightly like the smile line is a little bit deeper on this side, but I don't know if that's just because I don't believe in face primers. I will admit I've not been doing very 
vigorous activity today so the wear time is definitely a lot better than it was in Hawaii when I was walking outside for hours as you can imagine so for my lazy days this is really nice. All right, I will check in for the final check-in very soon. All right, so it is the end of the day. I have worn this foundation for like nine hours. My hair has gotten progressively larger as the day has gone by. So here's how the foundation's looking after nine hours. Keep in mind, it's been nine hours. However, I didn't do any crazy movements, wasn't outside really. So the foundation is definitely wearing better because of that than some of my previous experiences. Overall, I mean, my skin looks pretty nice. It definitely looks worn at this point and look like it's ready to come off. Uh, I do notice some breaking up around my mouth, definitely around my nose, it's starting to come off. And Initially, the foundation did sink into the smile lines, but it kind of stayed that way throughout the almost the entire day without getting worse. And now it's definitely starting to get worse. At this point, there's literally no difference between the primer side and the no primer side. I mean, it's a nice foundation. It looks natural. I don't look overly oily. And even though it's the end of the day, I still don't even feel it on my skin. So I'm going to zoom out. So here are my final thoughts on the products. I feel like the primer, it's a nice primer. I don't feel like it's necessary for you to buy it is quite pricey so you know if your money is tight I wouldn't spend my money on it just because it's nice but it doesn't really do much it just makes my skin feel nice the foundation again it's nice I I personally really like the foundation I am a little concerned though because I have had a zit kind of develop throughout the day. Don't know if it has to do with this foundation, but I do really like it. I think I like it a lot more than other people do. I just love the finish. I think it's so natural and lightweight on the skin. As far as the powder, I also do really enjoy the powder. I think it's very smoothing. It did a very good job controlling my oils. And what I'm very impressed with is I did not wear concealer, but I put the foundation on. And the powder has done a really good job of holding it up. My under eyes look super smooth. So I actually think the powder is a really good formula. Here are kind of the cons though. I feel like, I don't know what she was thinking with the packaging, honestly. As a Pat McGrath makeup lover, I expect good packaging all the time because all of her packaging is so luxurious. And I felt like she only took the time to make the foundation packaging nice. The primer and the powder packaging are just cheap to to be honest and part of buying Pat McGrath makeup is that luxurious experience of opening it, holding it, using it and I just don't get that from the primer and the powder and for them being so pricey there's no reason for them not to have below average packaging but as a Pat McGrath fan I am disappointed in that and also the value of that powder is just atrocious but <laughs> anyways so do I think it's worth it or not? I know for me as Pat McGrath fan, as an enthusiast about her line and makeup in general and doing what I do, I personally do not regret the purchase. I love Pat McGrath and I feel good about investing in her brand. However, if you aren't a Pat McGrath fan, you feel no affiliation towards the brand and you know, you've been saving up your money to buy nice complexion products, I honestly think you can take your money elsewhere and find foundations that are just as good for a cheaper price. You know, if you do not purchase this launch, I don't think you're missing out on anything crazy amazing. The products are really good, but you know what I'm saying. If the Pat McGrath complexion line isn't the end all be all, so there are definitely better, more affordable options that I feel like are on par with this launch. So anyways, that is all I have to say about this line. I hope that what I said makes sense. I know there's a lot of controversy going on about this foundation. I could even tell that in my comments in my previous Pat McGrath foundation video. So I hope this cleared things up for you and I hope it was helpful. Thank you guys so much for watching this video. Make sure you subscribe to my channel if you haven't already and I will see you guys in my next video. Bye guys!